Hello and welcome to another video of time series forecasting. Previously, I talked about time plots where you plot any time series against time to see how a series is behaving over time and observe various kind of patterns in a series. I talked about trend seasonality or cyclical patterns or any combination of uh, these patterns in my previous uh, video. So you can either observe an increasing trend, decreasing trend or no trend in a series. Similarly, you can observe seasonality or lack of it or a cyclical behavior or an absence of a cyclical behavior in a series. And I showed you many examples depicting uh, combinations of uh, these patterns. In this video, I'm going to extend the discussion of uh, looking at uh, different patterns in a series. But in this case, rather than looking at the time plot of our time series, we're going to look at the behavior of uh, two time series in relation to each other. We're going to look at uh, scatter plots. And when we look at scatter plots, we are looking at uh, how two time series are related to each other so that we can explore relationship between uh, those two time series and we can look at the direction of the relationship between the two series and we can look at the strength of the relationship between these two time series. So let's uh, look at an example and in this example we are looking at the electricity demand and the temperature in uh, Australia. You can have a look at the summary statistics of the data set before doing anything, we need to call this library FPP2, which contains uh, all these uh, data sets that we're going to need and also it's going to bring all the packages that we need. So let's look at uh, the summary statistics and note that there are three time series in this data set. Electricity demand, whether it was a workday or not, it's a dummy variable or binary variable and then we have a time series representing uh, the temperature of uh, the area. So we can look at the head and uh, the tail of the data set to make sure that everything is fine. Then we can look at uh, both of these time series that we need and we can plot these two time plots. Remember there are three columns in this time series. So what I'm doing in this command is I'm extracting only demand and temperature columns from our data set and saving it as uh, electricity demand and temperature and in the next uh, command what I'm doing is I'm plotting these two time series and I'm making facets true to make uh, these two graphs separated uh, by the variables so we have two time plots and uh, one time plot is showing you demand over time and another is showing you temperature over time but essentially our goal here is to look at uh, the graph showing the relationship between uh, these two variables. So here I'm saving our data set, our original data set that we begin with as a data frame and then I'm using ggplot command and then I am using aesthetics, I'm using uh, temperature on the x-axis and demand on the y-axis from the data set and then I'm using genome points which means all these uh, data points they will be represented by these points so a couple of observations one whenever the temperature is low we see in this zone the electricity demand is high which means as the temperature declines initially the electricity demand increases right so in this direction similarly when the temperature increases here the electricity demand goes down. On the other hand, when the temperature rises above 30, it's uh, hot, which means the electricity demand increases because of air conditioning effect, etc. So electricity demand is higher when the temperature is colder as well as when the temperature is warmer. Hence, we observe two types of relationships in uh, this uh, scatter plot. Let me show you another plot. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to pairwise plot various variables together and here I'm going to use this Wisnights data set and I'm extracting only five variables or five columns from this uh, data set. I'm saving it as data and then I'm using this library ggalley and uh, these two columns means I'm using this uh, library and then I'm plotting all those variables pairwise. So hence we'll get a plot like this. 
So you may have various variables in your data set. What this command will do is it will plot all the variables against each other. And you will get a plot like this. Here you will have scatter plot of each variable against each other. And these uh, diagonal plots are showing you density plots. And then you have this correlation coefficients, which is showing you correlations between different variables. Let's look at another data set and another example of uh, these correlations. And these are the arrivals of passengers across various pairs of countries. We can see the correlation between uh, New Zealand and the US is 0.81. We can look at these correlations from these graphs as well. There is a high correlation between the passengers in the UK and the US, which is shown by this uh, line. We can see clear positive association between these two variables. And also we can observe this from this correlation coefficient, which is 0 0.84. And between New Zealand and Japan, the correlation coefficient is 0 0.4, which is kind of moderate. And uh, let's look at the graph. It is shown here between Japan and New Zealand. The correlation is kind of weak as compared with the other graph. This is how you can read pairwise graphs. Essentially, the point is looking at these scatter plots to look at the relationship between uh, various uh, variables. And similarly, these correlation coefficients show you the same thing. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, these uh, correlation coefficients. And building on that, we're going to talk about autocorrelation and how to observe various patterns in a time series by looking at uh, correlation coefficients. And in particular, we're going to look at autocorrelation function or ACF, which will depict various uh, patterns in a time series. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.